Hi everyone, Eagle 3 back with another DCS Mission Editor tutorial. Today I'm going to walk through a typical carrier strike group composition, formation, and how it provides helpful markers for inbound and outbound pilots. I'll then save the strike group as a template that can then be applied to new missions. Now if one were to look at fleet photos online, they'd get the impression that the U.S. Navy sails around in large, tight formations. Carriers, battleships, guided missile cruisers, frigates and destroyers, even surface submarines. We'll fly a few planes overhead for a photo op of ships from horizon to horizon. Then we take some time off to fire up the grills for a steel beach picnic with burgers and 12 ounce curls. Finally, we wrap up the day by launching some planes with a bitchin' sunset backdrop. You remember. The pride flies high. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Well, all right, it was an adventure, but it was also a grueling and demanding job. Long hours, an extremely dangerous environment all the time. Non-stop stress to meet the flight schedule, uncomfortable a lot, and extended periods of time away from family and friends. But it was also the most rewarding thing many of us roof rats have ever done, and it was a hell of a lot of fun. My template is based on carrier operations from my three years I was aboard the USS Midway in the early 1980s. I don't imply that it is how it's done today or even how it was accomplished in the Atlantic or Pacific fleets back then. The Navy has several fleets, the largest being the Atlantic and Pacific. These two fleets can at times do things differently. Neither are particularly right or wrong unless you ask a sailor from that fleet, in which case they'll tell you their way is the right way and you're an idiot for even asking. An extension of the pack fleet is the seventh fleet, which is homeported in Japan. The USS Midway was the first carrier assigned to the seventh fleet in 1973 and was homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. She was there until 1991 and left Japan for retirement. She's now a museum in San Diego, and I can't stress enough how much you should go visit if you ever get a chance. Midway operated at a tempo that U.S. based carriers could never approach. We were at sea all the time, earning the nickname USS Never Dock. We also did things our way, and would often claim there's the West Coast way, the East Coast way, and then there's the Midway. So my formation arrangement may not square up with other shipmates' remembrances of fleet operations. The term carrier strike group is relatively new. Prior to the 1990s, they were called carrier battle groups. The two terms are basically interchangeable, though. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll mainly reference my experience with Midway and Carrier Group 5. The core of the group is the aircraft carrier, and carrier groups operate with just one. Occasionally, you'll see photos of two or more carrier groups together for a photo exercise, or what we used to call Photo X. And these were usually taken after multi-group exercises. The rest of the Midway group would comprise of one Leahy-class guided missile cruiser, a pair of Knox-class guided missile frigates, and a handful of Spruance-class destroyers. There was also a sub shadowing us most of the time. Today, strike groups consist of a Nimitz-class carrier, one or two Ticonderoga missile cruisers, and a fistful of Arleigh destroyers. During flight operations on Midway, we would see three of our escorts, sometimes four, performing plane guard duty from the flight deck. All of them were located in key areas to assist in quickly recovering an air crew in case of a takeoff or landing mishap. Because they are located in areas that are frequented by overhead air carrier aircraft, they'll also serve as a nice place marker for where you should be in various patterns. Okay, where and how to place the ships and why? First, let's look at a couple of diagrams from the Navy's T-45 Carrier Procedures publication See Natra Papa 816 to understand the why part. The first illustration shows the pattern for a Class 1 VMC or Visual Meteorological Condition Trap. Our downwind leg should be about one nautical mile of beam of the carrier's port side, so sitting 90 degrees off the carrier's port side should be our first plane guard conveniently located one nautical mile from the carrier. This escort's position is an excellent visual indication that you are positioned correctly on your downwind leg without putting your head down in the cockpit to look at the HSI. If you have your tack end tuned to the ship, you should be able to see on the HUD that you're approximately one nautical mile away when you pass a beam. Next is the trailing plane guard. 
This one has a fair bit of leeway regarding the proximity to the ship. It can be as close as 1,500 feet, but I recall it being further out than that. It should, however, be directly behind the carrier. I place it where it can be used as a visual cue during the turn to final. By crossing over it or its path, you know you are at the 90 in your turn to final. I typically use 3,000 to 4,500 feet. The next illustration from the Papa 816 pub shows the Case 1 overhead holding pattern. Each air wing squadron has an assigned holding altitude for this pattern starting at 2,000 feet. Point 1 is directly over the carrier, though the diagram doesn't display that very well. Point 3 is 5 nautical miles from the port side of the carrier and is an excellent spot for our third plane guard. Like the other port side plane guard, this one will also be 90 degrees from the carrier's BRC. The fourth plane guard is optional, but you may find it useful. The departure procedure for Class 1 flight operations instructs the pilot that once the aircraft is cleaned up and has established a positive rate of climb, to fly a parallel course to the BRC at an altitude of 500 feet and a speed of 300 knots until you reach 7 DME, or 7 nautical miles ahead of the carrier. At that point, you're cleared to climb out and proceed on your mission. An easy way and correct way to know when you reach 7 DME is to turn on your tack hand and tune into the carrier before departing, then just follow your progress on the HSI. Placing another plane guard escort 5 nautical miles ahead is another visual cue. By the time you launch and reach the lead plane guard, you will have traveled about 7 nautical miles or close enough. I vaguely remember an escort in this position, but it wasn't typically visible. Okay, now let's get the team on the playing field. All right, we're in the mission editor using the Persian Gulf map, which is an excellent map for carrier operations. We'll start by putting down our aircraft carrier and select the Naval Group tool. We've got the Abraham Lincoln already selected, so we'll go ahead and use that and left click and place the carrier. We'll go ahead and zoom in on him. And you'll see uh, the heading's already 335 degrees. This is the base course that I use for most of my aircraft carriers. It uh, tends to work well on all the maps. It is one thing that is saved when you create a template. Changing the name of the group, the unit name, waypoints, advanced waypoint actions, or speed is not saved whenever you create a template. So we're not going to bother setting any of that right now. But the heading is saved. Next, let's go ahead and throw down uh, our first escort. And we will make that the, where to go, USS Ticonderoga, right there. So we'll use him as our plane guard on the port side, one nautical mile out. Our BRC, or, or heading, is 335 degrees. Minus 90 degrees from that is 245 degrees. So using the uh, ruler tool, we're able to click and drag off the side to one nautical mile. Went way too far there on that. 245 degrees, so that's close enough. If you right click, once you're done setting your ruler where you want it, it will lock the ruler and it won't disappear on you. Then you can click on your units and move them around. So we'll go ahead and grab the Tyco and stick him right there. And then to get rid of the ruler, you just click on the ruler tool again. All right, we'll click on the, actually we'll click on the Ticonderoga. We will increase the group by another unit, which is down here. And this one we will make a Oliver Hazard Perry guided missile frigate. And we will set him at the five nautical mile mark for the uh, outer edge of the overhead pattern. Grab our ruler again, 245 degrees, 5 nautical miles out. If you don't have enough room, you can zoom out and then zoom back in, and that'll get you the room that you need. So 245, that is close enough right there. Right click, then grab your unit and drag him over, zoom in, and stick them at the end of that line. So that's those two. Get rid of the ruler click on the unit and we will increment again by one 
this will be an Arleigh Burke okay, missile destroyer and we will use him for the trailing plane guard so in this case we will grab our ruler and the heading will be the reciprocal of 335 which is 155 degrees and I like to set this guy out about 3,000 feet so we'll go 3,000 feet at 155 degrees that's close enough right click grab your unit stick him on the end of that line get rid of the ruler and then finally we'll create one more Arleigh Burke and he will be our vanguard at the front five nautical miles out ahead of our Ticonderoga. So click on the ruler tool, start from the bow of the Ticonderoga, zoom out, and he is on our BRC so that's going to be 335 degrees at about five miles. That's good right there. Grab our other Arley Burke zoom in and stick the stern right on the end of that line get rid of the ruler and that is our carrier strike group now to save it as a template go up to edit add template and it's already got the the group selected that we created naval one you want to give it a name in this case I like to use Lincoln strike group save template. Uh, I've already got one so we'll say Lincoln Strike Group 1. So now that's saved and if you want to create one we'll go ahead and put one over here. Go into edit, add template and then from your drop down up at the top here select your strike group. So Lincoln Strike Group 1, click on it and there you go and it is make sure you close the template menu and you scroll in and he is on our base heading go ahead and have a look and see what it looks like well would you look at that another fine navy day Hope you found this useful as well as the background information and if you did please consider leaving a like. Also let me know in the comments if I can expand on this in any way. If you're a fellow Navy vet let me know if this was the way you remember flight ops or did your carrier group do anything differently. In my next video I'll discuss configuring the base carrier strike group, advanced waypoint options, useful AI units, and supplementary static units in placement. Thanks again for watching and until next time Eagle 3 out.